Hey everybody, I'm Joe with Joe's Phenomenal and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing the Keurig K-Duo coffee maker. So without further ado, let's check this thing out. Okay, let's go over some of the features. First of all, it's got a 12 cup carafe. On the back here, there is a 60 ounce reservoir that is removable, so if you want to fill it up in your sink, you can. Obviously, there's the main draw of this coffee maker, which means you can either use ground coffee to make an entire pot, or you can pop this open and use K-cups, just like a traditional Keurig. And in here, it even comes with a little thing here for coffee grounds. So if you want to make a single serving cup of coffee, you can do that with actual ground coffee without having to make an entire pot or use the K-cups, put that in there and there's a little bit added convenience for you. Another feature that it has is called pause and pour. And what that is, is if you're brewing an entire pot of coffee and it gets about halfway full here and you want to pour yourself a cup, you can actually pull the craft right out and go ahead and pour your cup and it'll stop the brewing so it's not pouring all over the place on the hot plate. And basically how that works is this thing right here is loaded up and whenever it's up, it can pour. And when you pull the carafe out, that drops down and it shuts it off. So basically it's still brewing coffee, but it's not able to come out. So you don't want to leave that out too long because it'll fill it up. But once you put this back in, you can probably see it. As you can see, it's just kind of, you can see it pushing it up right there. And it's actually very, very effective. It's convenient to have. I didn't really think I cared too much about that, but you use it a lot more than you think you would. On the control panel, you have several things. You have the auto button here, which is basically used to schedule brewing. You have the hour and minute buttons here. Those are used to set the time and also to set the time for your automatic brews. Then you have these two buttons here that are flashing that just kind of walk you through how to use it each time you turn it on. And we can either make a K-cup or we can make a pot of coffee. If you click the K-cup button here, then everything else lights up on what you can do. You can either do six, eight, 10, or a 12 ounce cup of coffee. And if I hit the strong button here, it will brew that a little bit stronger for me as well. Um, or I can make the carafe and these same buttons are lit up. That's actually six, eight, 10, or 12 cups of coffee. And without the large reservoir, you have a pretty hard time making a 12 cup carafe. Once you decide what you want to do, in my case, I want to do a carafe and I want to do 12 cups, then it will tell you on the screen here and all you got to do is go ahead and brew. Coffee drinker, huh? If you're going to brew on the carafe, it's pretty straightforward. You just pop this open, you put in your filter, you put in your coffee grounds, shut it back up and you're ready to go. Once you get done brewing an entire pot of coffee, you'll notice that the carafe light here is on. And all that really means is that the hot plate underneath is turned on to keep the coffee warm. To brew a K-cup, you actually put that button in, pop this open, you either put in your K-cup here, or you can pop this guy open here, put in your coffee grounds. It's got a built-in filter. Close it back up, shoot that in there, and in effect, you have the same thing. Okay, so now as far as what we liked about it, first, you get the convenience of having both brewed coffee and K-cups. Um, I remember before we had a K-cup only brewer, and it got to be sort of a pain in the neck because I like to have two cups of coffee. My wife will usually have one or two. And that meant we were going through K-cups pretty quickly. And also you got to keep brewing a cup at a time. They, they brew pretty quick, but having the craft there is really nice. It's the lifeblood that drives the dreams of champions. Second, you have the ability to schedule your brew. I know most coffee makers have that feature, but I've seen coffee makers that don't have that feature. And I've seen pretty expensive ones that don't have that feature too. So. The fact that it's there, that's a plus. Third, the cleanup is really easy. In the past, that's been the big draw for Keurig single cups is that basically you pop the thing open, there's only one or two pieces of the clean, you throw the K-cup away and you're good to go. This makes it easy on both ends, even with the potted coffee, the entire inside portions come out, you can rinse those out and everything stays nice and clean. Even the overflow reservoir for the K-cups pops off and you can just kind of take that out and wash it in the sink and then you're good to go. Fourth, it has that large 60 ounce reservoir. That comes in really handy, especially if you're using single K cups because you don't have to fill the thing up too often. And if you're brewing a 12 cup pot of coffee, it'll do that entire thing, plus it'll have a little bit left over at the end. 
Fifth, there's lots of brew sizes for both the K-Cups and for brewing an entire pot. Whereas you can brew 6, 8, 10, 12 ounces or cups depending on whether you're doing a K-Cup single serve or doing an entire pot. Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a large. He means a venti, yeah, the biggest one you got. A venti is large. Mm, no, venti is 20. Also, the warm-up and brewing takes place pretty quick. Single cups only take about a minute and a 12 cup pot of coffee takes about nine and a half minutes or so. And finally, it's just a nice looking coffee maker in general. That doesn't have much to do with the function, but I do like how it looks. Now for the negatives. The water reservoir is on the back. That means if you put it on your countertop and you got cabinets up above, you're either gonna have to remove the reservoir in order to refill it, or you're gonna have to slide the entire coffee maker out enough to get a pitcher back there. For most people, they're just gonna go ahead and pull the reservoir off, but we keep a pitcher full of filtered water in the refrigerator that we like to use to refill the thing. And it's more convenient to just go ahead and pour it straight into it without having to take the reservoir off. And second, this isn't just a knock against Keurig, it's really a knock against all kitchen appliances that I've ever seen. And it applies to coffee makers, it applies to microwaves and ovens and everything else. When it loses power and you plug it back in, Everything resets to 12 o'clock, including all your schedules and everything else. I don't see why they can't just put a watch battery in there or some non-volatile memory or something that can record that time and keep it in there whenever you have a power outage. That means if you unplug it or your GFI pops or something like that, then you gotta reset your time. It only takes a few seconds to do, but it does get annoying, especially if you like to move your coffee maker around. And, hey, by the way, if this is your first time here and you wanna learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. The third problem, which is really an annoyance, is the carafe design. You know that the spout has this rectangular shape to it, which looks really nice, and it works well as long as you're pouring out of the carafe perfectly straight. But if you pour that carafe at any sort of angle whatsoever at all, coffee spills all over the place. It's really, really not the best design on the carafe I've seen, and I've never really had a problem with that with any of the other ones I've used. Are you no good, son of a- You crazy bastard, well, how the hell did you get out? Now get out! They've always used that triangular design that you see on the old coffee makers and old carafes and stuff like that. I don't really know why they couldn't just keep that shape, it would have been a lot better. And it is super annoying because I've poured plenty of coffee on the ground and downsides of cups and everything else. The last negative, depends whether that's a negative to you or not, is the price. Uh, this thing retails at about 170 bucks. At that price, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking that you might want to wait for that thing to be on sale. For 170 bucks, it really needs to have more features than what it does. Maybe the addition of Wi-Fi so you can schedule on your phone or it can send you a notification when your coffee's done or something like that. But for what it has at 170, not the greatest price at all. We got lucky, we got ours for right about 100 bucks, I believe it's about $110. And at that price, I think it's a great deal. Especially when you consider single cup Keurig brewers with large reservoirs tend to cost right around 100 bucks themselves. So I would think that up to around $120 or so, this thing should be a pretty good deal. So if you see it around that price, I'd recommend picking one up. It'd be a good price for it. But anything over that, I would think you'd want to wait for it to go on sale. If you have any questions about this thing, just go ahead and let me know down below. We have a link to it down in the description area of the video if you want to check it out and learn more. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Joe's Phenomenal, you can watch a couple more videos or you can visit us online at joesphenomenal.com. I thank you so much for watching this video. And once again, my name is Joe and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.